But it's not just found in Philadelphia or even the United States. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to words. Specifically, words that I only heard during my recent visit to Pennsylvania. And on that note, a big welcome to the thousands of Pennsylvanians who subscribed to my channel after watching my last video, I did it, I ended up in Pennsylvania. Of course, if you didn't get the chance to subscribe, don't be afraid to do that now. For those who haven't seen it, I'll link to that video at the end of this one. But growing up in England and watching America from afar, it's easy to believe that you've got American English sussed out. That, ooh, they say aluminum and we say aluminium. Aren't we so fundamentally different? But what I didn't know until I moved here is that we are even more different than that. Because something that you realise travelling around this vast country is notable for regional terminology that we just don't know much about in Britain. And I've come to find that one of the finest examples of this is Pennsylvania. Whether we're talking about food, travel or just basic pronouns, here are eight words I only heard after going there to Pennsylvania. Oh dear, I don't believe it. We're just one word in and I already have to issue a caveat. Some of the words on this list I had heard before my visit to Pennsylvania, just not in the United States. Basically, in the state of Pennsylvania, as opposed to most of the rest of the United States, there is a word that's used to describe somebody who's nosy, and that word is nebby. And I've got to say, it's a fabulous word, but the beautiful truth of the matter is it didn't originate in Pennsylvania. In fact, the word nebby, with the exact same meaning, is used in parts of the United Kingdom. How do I know this? Because I used to use it myself whenever my parents would inquire about the lighter fluid under my bed. In general, the word nebby can be found in the northeast of England and parts of Scotland. And like many words, probably found its way to Pennsylvania via Scotch-Irish immigrants. The same cannot be said of this. For the most part, our drive through the state of Pennsylvania was largely without incident, but it wasn't always without confusion. There we were just driving along the open road when all of a sudden we saw these warning signs containing the mysterious word, berm. We had no idea what it meant, but we assumed that if we just kept driving, we'd hopefully avoid this apparent threat to the human species and hunker down in our hotel. As it turns out though, a berm is mostly harmless. It comes from Old Dutch and it's just another way of saying the shoulder of the road. And as it happens, the word is not just unique to the state of Pennsylvania. It can also be found in the state of Ohio and, much to my surprise having lived there, the state of Indiana. Clearly somebody wasn't paying attention for eight years. Oh, and while we're on the subject of roads, let me throw in a bonus entry. While I had heard of the word turnpike before moving to the United States, the US appears to be split on whether to use this word or the word toll road meaning the same thing. And if you're heading east from Chicago, it seemed to me that once you get past Indiana, toll roads become turnpikes pretty much the rest of the way. And something else that you might find along the roads of both Ohio and most certainly Pennsylvania is this. With the notable exception of Philadelphia, it felt like everywhere we drove, we came across these little convenience stores called Sheets. And when I say little, I mean huge. They're not just big, they're like the Harrods of roadside shops. How do I know this? Because we went in one, and no, there is no film footage of it, because it just so happens that at the moment we pulled in, so too did a group of big bearded bikers, and I panicked. But can you remember all the way back to a few seconds ago when I said with the notable exception of Philadelphia? Well, that's because there they have this. That's right, while Sheets services Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia, Ohio, Virginia, and North Carolina, there's another apparently similar outlet that services Philadelphia, other mid-Atlantic states, and Florida, apparently. And that place is Wawa. I hope I said that right. Wawa, Sheets, it's like being back in music class. And I looked this up, the headquarters of Wawa is located in the unincorporated community of Wawa. And that's funny because Hershey is based in the unincorporated community of Hershey. But here's the difference. Wawa the place was not named for the company, but the other way around. Either way, it's gotta make for some really funny family car rides. Imagine it. Hey mama, can we go to Wawa in Wawa and get some toy cars and ice cream bars and an extra helping of these? What can I say? Out there in the eastern United States is a different world. They eat crab cakes, they have 24 states per square mile, and they don't always call sprinkles sprinkles. You know, those tiny chocolate things that are used as a topping for cupcakes and ice cream. Nah, in Philadelphia and parts of New England, these are referred to 
as Jimmy's. And it got me wondering, who's Jimmy? Well, it turns out there's an urban legend that Jimmy refers to Jim Crow. But thankfully, after scouring the internet for clues, there's precisely zero evidence that this is the case. And as it happens, it's not the only food-related word for which the origin is uncertain. Take, for example, this. Because of my line of work, I'm quite familiar with the US dialect maps that were put together by the linguist Joshua Katz. And one of the questions that accompanied this study was, what do you call the long sandwich that contains cold cuts, lettuce, and so on? And as you can see from this map, Pennsylvania has a lot to say on the subject, because there, such a sandwich is referred to as a hoagie. And the only other time that I've heard the word hoagie was watching Michael Caine in the reprehensibly bad Jaws the Revenge, because hoagie was the name of his character. And at some point, the shark tries to eat him, which can only suggest that the shark is from Pennsylvania and got confused. And while the internet can now rejoice at discovering the fake origin of a fake shark, the origin of the word hoagie is not quite so clear-cut, pun intended. In some capacity, it seems probable that it partly derived from the word hog. But this could either be in reference to pork, or in reference to Hog Island, which is a shipyard frequented not just by mechanical sharks, but Italian immigrants that might have gone by the name Hoggies and might have packed these sandwiches. For my liking, there's just a bit too much might. However, thanks to you people and my people, things are a little more definitive when it comes to this. It's official, baseball is no longer America's favourite pastime. That's right, it's been knocked off its perch by another activity, and that activity is coming up with different words to describe a group of people. Depending on which part of the United States you've got guys, y'all, even dudes these days, to describe a group of people regardless of gender. And Pennsylvania took this idea and decided that it needed not just one of these kind of words, but two. The first of those is use, as in where are yous going? And much like wawa, this is more commonly found in Philadelphia. But it's not just found in Philadelphia or even the United States. Because what if I told you that the word use made its way to Pennsylvania via those same Scotch-Irish immigrants that brought us Nebby? And to this day, the city of Philadelphia has one thing in common with the English cities of Liverpool and Newcastle as well as parts of Ireland and central Scotland, where the word use is often used in the same capacity. However, as far as I can tell, there is one variant of this word that appears to be America's own, and it's this. That's right, in western Pennsylvania, in places like Pittsburgh and the surrounding areas, locals might be heard using the word yins, a contraction of you ones from you ones as in you ones can do ones, I just made that up. And if the word sheets and yins are anything to go by, the rest of Pennsylvania will just do their words differently to how Philadelphia does it, and just add a Z and or Z. That's it for this episode, let me know in the comments below your favourite Pennsylvanian words and some other ones I missed. I'm Lawrence Brown, you can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond. US. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. Finally, a hoagie size shout out to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to support Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye.